So the Overwatch beta just went live again today, and the interface is actually beautiful, like absolutely beautiful in every way. There's this Heroes Gallery where you now have all of these heroes, which you progress unlocking things through loot crates. Every time you play the game, you get experience and you level up. I'm currently level seven. When you level up, you get a, basically a pack of items and the items come with a variety of customizable things for every hero. So if we go to Tracer, who I actually really just got lucky on and I opened up a legendary skin. This is not something I had to buy. This is a skin that came uh, out of a pack earned from playing the game. And it was really fun. It's called Mach T. It's one of the legendary skins. It looks pretty cool. There's a bunch of just color variants, which are really nice just for customization. When we have esports teams that all want to run like, you know, Cloud9, they all want to run their blue skins. We just pop on the blue tracer skin or maybe they want to use Mach T because that looks pretty cool. Um, and there's all these. And then this is the one or there's there's one down here. The slipstream comes from purchasing uh, the Origins bundle. So there will be some paid for items one way or another, but most of them are unlocked through the game. And I don't, I mean, 1,000. It's like a one in 1,000 chance to get a rare. I think that's what that means. So I, you know, on my third pack, I got a one in 1,000 chance to, to get this skin. I got pretty darn lucky. On top of that, there are emotes that you unlock. These, this is the, when you hold the C wheel and you swap up. So that's one emote. That's pretty cool. That's another one. And then, so emotes are actually pretty rare and they want to make those really fun. When you get play of the game, you have a heroic pose. There's four different poses for Tracer. So play, play, oh, is it currency? You guys are saying it's a currency cost. Okay, if it is a currency cost, that's news to me. So you can also buy them with a currency cost. I'm actually not certain, to be honest with you. So I could be wrong. If that is a currency cost, that's really cool then because also, also you have an option to work towards an item. I have not seen currency my okay that's what this this must be on the right thank you for the clarification chat so there's there's a currency cost of 1000 not a rate and then this is the price of that item currency cost probably earned through playing the game maybe that's not implemented yet um there's a salute these are all the very oh that is actually awesome um you know i was actually told to check out diva so we'll check that in a minute time is on my side bunch of different keep calm and cheers love Looks like you need it. The world could always use more heroes. Tons of different sprays. And this is something that I really want to talk about because sprays are very good for the game uh, to show off like your personal character. Like, do you want an 8-bit? Um, Joshi, I'm making a video. Sorry, man. <laughs> Hold on. I'm making a video. Sorry. <laughs> uh, anyways, so... Yeah, there's the 16-bit the tracer. We've got the, there's all different kinds of ones, all based on your preference and whatnot of what you think represents you. Then they bring in other games. They got these like fun fan arty things. They could definitely do esports teams. Oops, well played. Sorry that happened. Like the Hearthstone ones, GLHF with the Marine. Um, all really fun, but I, you know, I'm just loving the idea of Cloud9 having Cloud9 skins, Tempo Storm having Tempo Storm skins, you name it, all being part of this. That's going to be really cool to have custom skins for those teams and that. Uh, another thing is you've got these. Oh, this is the Highland Trip, excuse me. I showed the wrong one. So, yes, as you get play of the game, it's going to show that animation or that animation. What an adorable character. I've just got random. Um, so the cool things about that is, of course, esports team spray paints, but also the fact that you unlock these packs, these loot box, and then you have these packs that you can open up. Unfortunately, I can't open one right now because I don't have one. It basically gives you four items. Those four items are randomized, but if you've ever been a Dota 2 fan or you ever watched a Dota 2 tournament within the client, right? You can actually go ahead and you can observe games in Dota 2. They've done promotions where it's like, all right, at the end of the game, you get a pack of items. You basically get loot from spectating that game. So imagine esports events where you watch a, a tournament uh, that's happening um, and you watch it within the client and you're just a spectator because you could just straight up go in to your friends list by pressing O and you can be like, all right, let's see. Dunk Train is playing a match. Let's observe. And it's like an insta join. There's like, there's no delay to that. So if their infrastructure can, can handle
handle me just joining my friends and watching their games, they're, they probably have an infrastructure that will support uh, the ability to do this at a massive, massive, like unlimited scale essentially, where 100,000 people can tune into an Overwatch match and all observe with that kind of functionality. Obviously they haven't announced anything like that, but theoretically, if it seems like the infrastructure is there and that's what matters. Training and stuff is all good and great. Back to the hero gallery. We just, I wanted to check out the D.Va one because apparently it's really beautiful. So the highlight intro. <laughs> the little sound effect makes. Nice, this is the one he said that's good, flying around. Oh, yep, no wonder he would tell me to do this. He knew I would like that. <laughs> yeah, I loved, I love Diva. She's pretty awesome, man. She's really fun. And there's all kinds of skins. I mean, just, just to get an idea of what they have for her. It's mostly just like, it's mostly just colors. I think Diva, will, they'll probably do more customized ones. Eventually, she's a really new hero. I mean, in terms of skins for Genji, anything cool. No, I mean, it's, again, all just colors. Who else is, like, a poster boy? Winston is kind of a poster boy. Does he have anything cool? <laughs> Banana. Uh, so, Marine. All right. Yeah, that's definitely cool. He's like, Aquamarine, under the sea. And Safari Winston. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. He had a little, like, sleeping mat on his back there. Uh, Reaper is the other one that's really kind of classic. Oh my god, that's awesome! And then they have a different tint of it. And then this is before he was fallen. He used to be part of Overwatch, and now he's a bad guy. So this is when he was still a good guy. I think he used to be like Soldier 76's ally or something. So definitely some cool customization that they're doing with all the skins in the game. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of really cool stuff. Eventually they could, like we have the Cloud9 mounts in Heroes of the Storm. They could make a Cloud9 version of a character and everybody wants to play this video game. Uh, moving on down to the social systems. The social systems is just a pretty nice little hub that you have where you can look at your what what voice chat you're in right now if you're in a group just going to show you this is all kinds of invites you have if they ever added a clan system that would probably go on this page this is also all very designed for console so since this game will be on console they have gone out of their way to make sure everything is console friendly in terms of the layout that's just a nice little page not like the most exciting thing in the world uh we in the career profile this is your character stats. This is pretty much everything about your character that you want to know. These are the heroes. This is how much you've played them. I played a good about Tracer. I played some Genji, and there's some heroes I haven't even had time to touch yet. We've just played 13 games. My record is eight and five. That's really nice to know, and it's fun to like be able to compare yourself versus your friends. Like, man, I've already logged 200 hours of Overwatch, and the game's only been out for a week. Would I brag about that? It's like, I don't have much of a life if I'm bragging about that because that's going to happen because I don't have much of a life. This game is insanely fun. Anyways, it's it's nice to have profiles like this where you have all these things. You can then have stats. You have all these medals. It's like, all right, I've got 19 bronze medals. At least I'm third place, right, boys? And I've gotten 48 medals, nine gold, one environmental kill. That means knocking someone off the ledge. Oh, those are hilarious. You now, the characters now scream as they go tumbling to their death. It's really actually quite funny. I've died 80 times. How many kills do I have? 190 eliminations. I don't know how many final blows. 107 final blows. All right, that's positive. Nailed it. And um, you can you can narrow that down. It's like, all right, I've been working on my diva. Like, how's my diva doing? She's uh, she's actually just atrocious. Like, I, I really I really don't want my friends to look at this page, but. They're gonna look at it. All right, and then player icons. I love this. This The style of this game is absolutely beautiful. And you know, we've got all these things from other games, Diablo, Hearthstone, Heroes, a bunch of Starcraft portraits. Uh, you know, you got Arthas in here. There's just so many. Like this Sylvanas portrait is awesome. She, they know that she's a really iconic character and that makes some cool portrait. A bunch of them theme from this game. The characters in this game already seem so like uh, lovable and memorable. Like, yeah, let's let's go with that one. Nice. Mixing it up, changing things. Uh, Lucio, I want the Diva Bunny ones. They've got two versions of it. Really, really quite awesome. And uh, I'm just ecstatic to see where this game goes. 
if they do embrace esports to the full element to the point where you get loot boxes from watching events and those loot boxes could have items that are specifically tuned for that event say it's super rare but you get a special item the tournament is called like the i don't know sparky boom boom club and you get the sparky boom boom logo portrait that would be the worst tournament name ever. I've realized that, but this is what I've got right now, all right? Sparky Boom Boom Man Avatar Esports. Uh, so if they embrace that, if they have in-game spectating with the full spectator stuff, and they build a really good spectator UI for, for viewership, for like the actual viewers that are just watching on Twitch or watching within the client, that's crucial. It's going to have a high learning curve for actually spectating this game. Already out of the gates, the spectator lobbies are quite good. There's a, a ton, 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 ton of customization. We can we can fit up to six observers. This is crucial for Europe, as Europe will always be having a multi-language option. They'll begin having you know Russian and, and German and French and Polish. You name it. You know it, you got to get all these different language. Uh, commentators in there so at the beta level having six slots is very good i think it'd probably benefit if they brought that up to about 10 it might seem crazy but you'd be surprised because usually commentators go in pairs in terms of settings there's a, an absurd level of customization like this is so good this enables the option to do weird tournaments look at the successful things in competitive hearthstone tournaments like challenge stone that have specific rules that aren't necessarily like the norm they're like a little bit different right people they go by uh different norms i mean you're restricted to opening packs it's kind of like arena tournaments hearthstone still doesn't even have arena tournaments heroes custom lobbies are like almost like non-existent in terms of options and this is like all to the wall like every you can turn off maps for that tournament just like yeah no this tournament we're not going to have these maps on oh okay fine you know that those rules are, are set in place allow hero switching you're now locked in to play diva for that whole game what does that do what does that do this makes makes it so that you can incorporate a draft in some way respawn is a random hero that sounds hilariously fun like you have no control of the hero that you are it's all random you can't swap your hero now it's all random spawn that sounds really interesting this is all for like the you know auxiliary side type of events but those things are all part of community building especially when it comes to trying to build a competitive game because those type of events that are a little bit more casual bridge the gap between the hardcore esports people and the average player that just really enjoys the game and want to watch something and have a good time like these are all really beautiful options to have uh you've got you can choose health bars damage modifiers so that everything's super volatile you can set it up to be like a head uh, like a headshot mode uh, this reminds me of playing Smash Brothers. I don't have much of an FPS background myself, but I grew up playing Melee and having Giant Mode and Lightning Mode and all these different modes within the game are amazing. Disable kill cams. You can turn that off if you want to make it a little bit faster. Disable kill feed. I mean, headshots only. Super, super fun. Team balancing. I don't really understand what that means, to be completely honest. Not really sure what that entails. But all of these features and all of these options that Blizzard has put into this game, it shows how much they've thought it out. They have sat down and they've storyboarded and they've planned out every element of the future of this game. These functions are good for console and PC from the ground up. And it's just beautifully, beautifully, beautifully done. I can't wait to see this game continue to grow. They still have a few months before they plan on launching. Someone in chat said June 21st was their like deadline date. I don't know how true that is, but still, we're, we're, it's, it's February. It's early February. They've still got four months or so before they intend to launch the game, potentially. I'm, sh I'm sure there'll be an open beta at some point. Really, the only the only negative thing I can say about the game is the actual spectator client still seems really poor and really limited. There's no way to look at a mini map. There's no way to look at a map in general and see the presence of each teams and their progress. And there's no tab page to see the scoring. You can't compare stats. There's no stats at all in that in that screen. They've added a ton of stats into the game for when you actually play your own game, but to have a list, a live list of stats in custom games comparison, information and data to pull up while viewing the game is gonna be very critical for that. I, I would imagine, based on what I see here in this version of the game, that that's something that is on the way, 
but I, I really have some crazy high hopes for competitive Overwatch, and I just can't wait to see it grow and be born. We already see teams getting picked up and signed, and well, now we know why. Looking forward to the future, but let's play some more games.